We're sitting with my friends, Kay Hanley, Michelle Lewis, artists, writers, extraordinaires, somethings. Yeah. Welcome. Moguls. Hi. You've got Moguls. Moguls. I reserved that for myself. It takes what I want. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how you two came together and started working together as writers. Okay. Well, it's funny. <laughs> well, we th we spent a lot of time just missing each other for like probably the last 15 years or so. Our husbands went to college together. Mm -hmm. Um, we were on the same label. We were, we were on the Giant, same. Signed, we both got person. signed by Irving Azoff, both mm -hmm. on Giant Records together. Mm -hmm. Never like I was. And at she the was beginning. in Boston. I was in New York, doing the same. We a lot of the same little affair, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody that I did. Little no, affair. Sorry. <laughs> that goes into the my cred. <laughs> um, and so, so she had moved to to Los Angeles, and then probably like a year later, I moved to Los Angeles, and. Um, she had been doing this thing, this development thing with Colum with Leeds and A at Columbia, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and she was kind of putting together this girl band, like the Thorns or something like that, with my friend Nina Gordon right. mm -hmm. and, and my Bonham. other friend Tracy Bonham. Mm -hmm. But Tracy had to leave, and I was t to do Blue Man Group or mm -hmm. whatever. So mm -hmm. when I was moving to LA, Nina was like, "I know the perfect person. We got to get K." Yeah. And so, um, me and Michelle and Nina just started kind of writing for this thing, and then Kay and I really had more of like a writing rapport. Well, um, we were like full of piss and vinegar. Yeah, we just we wanted like, to like yeah. write it all, right. all, you know, right. every day and like right. get stuff right. done. And all different like, kinds of genres or? Well, no, this was for the dilettantes. Uh, so, very specific so it was very specific for the project. Very specific kind of yeah. for the project. It's more like, a, it was kind of power pop kind of stuff. Just basically our, ta like our taste in music mm. kind yeah. of thing. And it was, it was really fun. Um, and we were. We had all this energy for it, and we were ready to get going. Nina was a little, like, Laurel Canyon, <laughs> or Nichols Canyon, like, in her nightgown, just kind of... Dogs ready. I love her solo record, by She's the way. She's amazing. I mean, oh, did she, I don't, did like, she do two solo yeah, records? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first one was the big one, right? The one that had... Um, Tonight and the Rest of My Life. Yeah. Yes, yes, what a great song. That was Bob Rock that did that. And I Kate's believe. husband. My yeah. husband was the guitar player mm -hmm. on that. Oh, well. Yeah. It's all yeah. very incestuous. Like, we all, all of our yeah. friends play on each other's records and right. you know we all knew we're on the same people and get married to each other's friends and whatever it's crazy. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to go from being artists to being on the other side and now obviously a writing duo, writing team, working with other artists. Mm -hmm. Is it something that you always saw yourselves doing or was it just a natural progression in your career? Hmm. Well it seemed to be the way to sort of maintain your dignity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's really true, yeah. Because um, you can only sort of like get in a van for so long without feeling kind of pathetic. Right. So, I mean, not to put down getting in a van. No, being in a van it. is awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's filled, it's, it's filled with, it's bursting with dignity when you're it's, 22. Exactly, mm -hmm. but then you know. 32, you're a little like, no, well, you start to get in the call for your parents, and I'm like, what are you doing? And yeah. yeah. And so, I don't, for me, and I think similarly for Kay, things just, you know, you're in the music business, you're making music and um, getting, you know, people kind of know who you are. And so I had some solo records and people started cutting, like other artists started cutting songs for my solo records. Like Kelly Osbourne did a song of mine, like Cher did a song of mine that I had written for myself. And that's where I, I kind of thought, like, oh, that has some dignity. Like, I can kind of stay home and write those songs and, and they can just kind of go off and put them out in the world and and that's what sort of put the put the little notion in my head that I didn't have to be you know the one performing the stuff that I was writing and I think sort of similar yeah I mean I I started doing more like soundtrack right. work you know and making money that way when we moved to LA though I was like I want to write songs for other people yeah. And so when I started working with Michelle, I knew that she did that, and I was always just kind of like, "All right, well, listen to this thing that I just wrote. I could another artist could cut this, right?" And she she just be like, "That's not really a pop song, you know." <laughs> and I just be like, "What are you talking about? It's like the story's so linear. It makes so much sense." And it's like, and she would just be like, "How can I let this poor girl down easily? Like these are not pop songs, you know." So. Yeah, when it, you're coming from your like Bob Mould. Like, I know, I know. Super I'm writing indie songs like cred background. Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, writing songs. But, well, whatever. But 
the thing the thing that ended up being great was that my sensibility and her sensibility in terms of our writing partnership mm -hmm, mm -hmm. our sensibilities worked very very well yeah, together totally so let's talk a little bit about your band you were in a band with a friend of mine Stacy Jones mm -hmm. for what you Ever? said, eight years? Did we, did we yeah, decide like, all the time? I don't know. It was like eight years. It was like our 20s, our entire 20s. And so tell me about that experience. You guys obviously had some hits, and you yeah. did a lot of touring. <clears throat> yeah. And what was that experience like? Do you feel like bands nowadays can't really get that same experience now because it's become so much more difficult to be on a label or to get a label deal or to get radio promotion behind you? Um, I think I think the way we did things kind of suffered for a minute there because, you know, everybody was getting signed and or if you weren't signed it was really hard to find your audience. But things have changed so drastically in the last even just like the last two years where you really can just get in the van and people it's actually better for indie bands now. If you're a if you're a band that's willing to, you know, make, be self sufficient, get in the van, book your own shows, make your own CDs, sell your own merch, it's like you can you could actually kind of make a living now. Which at that time, I mean, we couldn't do. We all had day jobs, and then we'd, you know, on long weekends, we'd get in the van and go to you know from Boston to New York to Philly to DC, and then back again on Monday morning and back to work. You know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just to, to go with that, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with a date with a musician with a day job. I just want to say, like, oh my god, there's I been know. such this weird sense of entitlement. To like, I feel like with the, most of the young artists I work with, they it's because of all the reality shows that sort of show that depict you know what it's like to become a musician or whatever, and it seems like instant. You can it's such this overnight thing. Like no one wants to freaking work. Like they're all you know thinking like that they're, they're going to get a deal. The label's gonna pay for everything, and everyone like quits their day job the second they start. They right, start to come which is a insane. It's insane. It's like I was a broke ass my entire career. You know, like you even I mean, I you know, everybody yeah. you do anything, you do whatever it takes, and you. I was you, the worst yeah. waitress officially in the world. <laughs> no, I think I actually I might have been the like worst waitress. I might have. Do you you would be worse than me. I think I'm late. My memory. Oh I'm right, less. you're late all the time. <gasps> So you would be the waitress there. I order something, and like twenty five minutes later, it hasn't actually been put in yet. So, but I'd, I'd be, be like flirting with you. Like <laughs> I'd be like, C you don't need that anyway. Come on. Like, so I, I probably would forgive you. You would totally yeah. forgive me. I'd charm my way out of it, but I sucked. You wouldn't get what you wanted. Yeah, I think you guys are. Uh, you're saying something that's really true. That there is this sense of entitlement. I think. Oh, just because I bought a guitar today, totally. I don't have to like have a real life unless you're in the van. Yeah. Touring then you have no right to not work, right? I mean, Exactly. Because if you're in the van, that's working. If you're touring, that's right. working. You're right, you're doing that's your job. And by the way, I never even considered that being in a band would be any gainful employment for me. I mean, I never thought of about, you know, it was like, this is something fun that I do. And then I guess I'll be in the restaurant business or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, I, I had no idea what I would do. But to me, it didn't seem like being in a band was like a reasonable thing to expect that I'd make a living at. Right. So it's kind of funny that I that we did actually make a living. But you know, I would come back from. I mean, even when we got a tour bus and we had a song on MTV and you know all that and things were going great, and I'd still come home and go back to work because that's what you you right. work. You don't sit. Home to me, I just I couldn't. I yeah. always need to have a destination, you know. Totally, and 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 it means freedom too. It's like if you're waiting for your manager to call or for the mm -hmm. and our guy to call, mm -hmm. there's no worse way to like kill mm -hmm. your your creative juice, yeah. whatever. Like make you hate everybody. You have to have so a life. Dark, yeah. You have to have a life, and that's really what I see among most of the sort of young artists that we work with. It's just a sense of like total entitlement to being famous and th that's the other part of it is it also seems you so much more about the fame than the making the fun of making music I yeah know. isn't that funny it's like we've skipped that step yeah. right it mm -hmm. just goes straight into the notoriety but you haven't totally. actually done the work yeah. exactly and like oh my god my husband's a musician he's a guitar player he just practiced for 
I mean, if he logged in all the hours that he, that he practiced, if he tallied those up, it would be hundreds, thousands of hours of playing guitar. Like, now it's like you said, as soon as someone buys one, like, you know, you think you're next day. Or... Let's talk about your solo record really quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you did it on analog tape. Mm -hmm. I think that they still make that. Some, they just started making it they... again, but I, but it's so expensive that Adam Lasses, who's the producer that I worked with, who I've, whom I've wanted to work with since I was a kid, um, made the record with him. He's you know buying tape because you can buy it again, but it's so prohibitively expensive that this is I don't really so know if say, I should say that say I'm it. just gonna say it I actually recorded my album over a pretty well-known band's well, we won't say who they master are. real we won't say tape who they are. Wow. because that you can do that you right. can record right. over right. the tape as we know from the stories that we heard back in the day where people would like producers not erase someone's whole <laughs> record by mistake like they smoked too much weed yeah. like Hit the wrong button. Well, we won't say what right. band it was no, that we won't. recorded over. But, no, uh, but, but I did record some of my record over somebody else's record. A very old record, like I think from 1993. That's hilarious. Or whatever, but yeah. That's so very I'm old. taking. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm it's just like... <laughs> um, so, so, what's the plan for the record? Is it on iTunes? Is it coming out on iTunes? Have you launched it? Mm, no. No. Is this for fans? Is this like this is, for the general public? I mean, like, do you... I think Kay's plan is actually what everybody should be doing, which is singles. The album is just to keep. So, I'm sorry, I'm talking for you, but the, no, the, the album, whatever it is, the CD. She's gonna be talking for you. In a yeah, couple I know minutes, exactly. So we always do this. Yeah. <laughs> freaking freaking frack over here. <laughs> um, so the album should probably press vinyl, which is totally hot. That's what I'm doing. And who knows about CDs, but like the collection of the, of the whatever body of work will probably be more like a keepsake. And I think what she's going to do is probably release singles like on her website or in, on iTunes, that kind of thing. And so oh, as like over the course of time, because she has fan, like a total fan base that will just kind of I have upwards buy. of 350 people that will buy anything I do. <laughs> 351. There you go. I like your attitude. Well, that's what I'm here to do. All right, exactly. please. Getting back to you know just the the artists that you guys work with and mm -hmm. and battling the fact that the industry is in shambles and that everyone's trying to figure out what the next move is. I mean, do you have an approach or do you have advice for for young artists that are trying to get started that can't rely on they can rely on touring? We know that. Mm -hmm. um, but doesn't it always just come back to great songs? Yes. Isn't that what it always comes down to? It it does and it doesn't because you can write the best. I mean, I cannot. My life is my history is littered with people who are a thousand times more talented than me or you or, and no one will ever ever hear their music because they were while being exceedingly talented in writing some of the best songs I've ever heard. Some people just don't have that thing that makes them, well, either they don't have the ambition to get out there and get or, stuff happening, or they don't have the, a lucky break, or they don't have... Or, and this I think is most often the case, is sabotage. Yeah. I think yeah. no one knows how to fucking sabotage their lives like, a, like, an, like artist. an artist. I, yeah. I just dealt with that with a client. Uh, not a direct artists that I work with but mm -hmm. a client through consultation and it was it literally like uh, I couldn't help them walking off their own plank it was yeah. like literally right. like oh I'm gosh, gonna just do everything I can to kill my career when everything yeah. is finally going my way it's the most ironic yeah, thing in the world and how many times when you were an art person did it like the artist not want to release the obvious single. No, oh, it, 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 oh my or god! Or it, whatever the they don't want to release like, becomes yeah. the single. What's your What's <laughs> exactly. your least favorite song on the record? Exactly. Great, that's your first that's single. That's your first single. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I mean, I think that's where Kay and I really uh, our biggest lessons to teach the people that we work with is how not to sabotage your own career. Like, right. How not to kill it. It's like if you're talented, here's your road. Here's like all the tools that you need to go forward. Don't fuck it up. Like here, and then how not to fuck it up. Like it's yours to mess up. Mm -hmm. So I think our kind of job is to sort of keep that from happening, and yet we still can. Some people are just determined. Yeah, they're really determined. Mm -hmm. But that's that. I think is the biggest 
problem with yeah people who agreed don't, who don't actually super talented people who never heard of it's because somehow yeah they were afraid of success or I think it's ultimately fear like fear of success or maybe uh, entitled again thought it should happen but I think doesn't all of that stem <laughs> from just a really massive insecurity totally I mean, oh, that's, what it, that's what it course. all stems yeah. from yeah yeah exactly and that's the uncomfortable balance that you have between like being a creative person and and having the ego to want people to know about it and then also feeling that you suck Mm -hmm. right everyone kind of struggles with that like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know deep deep insecurity and self-loathing with like this but look at me but look at Mm -hmm. me right and that's what we get to deal with all the time yes lucky you yeah yay okay Hanley Thanks, Michelle Scott. Lewis, my friends. Friends. We're friends. And now we're going to sip green tea. Big hug. Oh, you want to talk and, about this drink that and you're... And kombucha? Tell, tell, we just talked about that for just a second. What is this okay. kombucha? This is a disgusting I won't even drink. tell you what this it smells like. This is a great like. endorsement like, for the cocktail, but, by the way. But, I mean, it's disgusting in a way that's, like, really oddly It says good. one billion organisms. Yeah, it's, it's a billion. probiotic. Okay, so here's the story. So um, when I I was back a vocalist on the Hannah Montana tour, she got to mention that. The, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's right. That was kind of a big thing that I just did. Well, I'm, I'm standing in front of all your gold records. Maybe I should have repositioned myself. <laughs> you got a lot of so, them here. We got we got things happening. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, so the other backup vocalist was Candice was just like completely obsessed with this thing, and. It, the first time I taste, like, I was just like, what are you talking about? It's a mushroom tea that's fermented vinegar with, ooh. And I took a, when I took a sip, it was just like, that's disgusting. But I kept thinking about it. <laughs> and then I made her get me one. And now I'm, I'm obsessed. It's really good. And it's so good for you. And where can people find kombucha? Whole foods. Whole foods. And okay. get the original kind if you want the no, vinegary we don't want to add. We don't want to add any sort of like delicious flavor. We want to no. go for the most disgusting. disgusting yeah. Vinegar. Vinegar. They do have delicious flavors, but fuck that. It's like I can have a Coke or a Tab if I want delicious. Right. You want the you want the microorganisms floating around. And they your are. Body. Look at that grossness. That, it's like it's a little look scary. At those, it, I think all your years of smoking have just killed your taste buds. Me? No, it's yummy. I think there's some things actually wiggling in on that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We gotta go. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Cheers.